This is the type of ad-libs he used on this song, this song, this song. This is one of the things that I'm gonna tell you that is gonna set you apart from all the other vocal engineers that your artists will go to and consult. Big, big secret. You want to learn how to record artists or record yourself. And by the way, this is a very great choice because recording artists is a great way to make money, but also get more placements and it applies to every DAW so everyone can do it. I got the ultimate guide for you and I also have a little bonus tip since Yeet ad-libs seem to be very in at the moment. Yeah, yeah. First of all, I don't want to waste your time, so check the link in the description, which is my latest song, and hear if this meets up to your standards that you want to achieve, because if it doesn't match up to your standards, then there's really no point in watching my vocal effect tutorial. Now, I know this video is not going to be interesting from start to finish for all of you. For most of you, it will, but some people will know certain things, so I will leave timestamps below so you can choose the parts that are most valuable to you. So the first step is going to get you a mic. TZ Audio was fortunate enough to send a mic over. I cannot thank them enough enough and I can't thank you guys enough because if you wouldn't be watching this wouldn't have been possible. TZ Audio sent me over a condenser microphone which is the typical microphone for recording vocals because these are more sensitive and they get it, they give a more detailed feel than other mics that you might see in your surroundings. Now you don't need the newest fanciest condenser microphone. I started off with this 20 year old performance mic and I still recorded artists with this thing so you gotta really sell yourself and make sure you just come over professional. The second step is going to be importing a beat. In this particular live set I have used my own beat so I have all the stems and the midi tracks and I can still adjust the mix. I offer my artists free beats when they use my beats or they can come with their own beats from other producers that's their choice but when they use mine they they can use them for free as long as they pay for the engineering. This is a great way to get yourself some more placements. If you have another beat, make sure to set the BPM to the right BPM before you import it. If you don't have the BPM, just sync it, that's tapping, bomb, and you just tap in the BPM. Now I was gonna say this is the third step, but this step actually is previous to the fourth step, which is setting up your vocal chain, lyrics. Most artists, even when they know you charge, will pull up without lyrics, they like to write them on the spot. Don't be lazy, have some input in their lyrics. Help them put ChatGPT open on a browser tab, use AI. This is the first time that we're gonna use AI, we're gonna use AI in the vocal chain too. AI will come up with a couple of rhymes, just get the rhyme scheme and then just adjust everything that comes before the rhyme words. This is one of the things that I'm gonna tell you that is gonna set you apart from all the other vocal engineers that your artists will go to and consult. The third step, we're gonna have to make a vocal chain and I know this is a quite daunting task so the first thing in every vocal chain should always be an autotune. I have this Waves autotune but you can use anything. I see a lot of people using Antares plugins. These are very good plugins too. Find the scale which you can play on a piano. I'm not gonna break that down. There are multiple videos on that or you can throw it into a key finder and then you're gonna want to put the scale into your plugin. The second thing I have is a gate. This is a secret, nobody uses this. Every DAW has an instrument called gate or like something in that sense anyway. What this is doing with these settings is making sure that the sound only comes through when I'm actually singing loud into the mic. So when I'll sing loud into the mic, it recognizes the volume and says, okay, he's actually rapping. We need to put this audio through the vocal chain. But once you stop rapping and the, the noises around you come into the mic, the gate will say, oh no, I'm not sending this to the rest of the effects and the audio will get blocked out. This is a really powerful setting as you can have noises in your recording and they will be eliminated by this plugin. The second thing I have is this EQ. Basically you don't need to do a lot of things, just cut out low and I had this one particular part where I set a F and like I almost whistled it. It was really weird so uh, I EQ'd that part out very meticulously. The second thing I have is a dynamic vocal EQ. This is de -essing the stuff. It doesn't do anything else than the s You're gonna see it move while I'm playing audio. Cooking up like my knees, I'm in the lab like my uncle. I was born a musician, I'm a man with a mission. So it's moving up and moving down depending on which thing it thinks it needs to do. Then I have some static de that are made with the presets of Ableton. I have two of those. You need to find the part where your S and SH sounds of your artists are too harsh and then do it manually. Then I have a compressor with pretty harsh settings. That's how I like it because over compressing sounds makes it sound quite professional. So compression is a probably like 20% deal of your whole vocal chain, which is important. Almost as important as autotune. Then we have this extra plugin. This is sauce. This is secret, secret sauce. I'm not even kidding. This is no clickbait, but this makes a difference between a good vocal engineer and a professional vocal engineer. So I have a second EQ. 
but this one is controlled by AI. There are two times in this video where I'm gonna be using AI. This is the first time. What you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to make this project listen to your vocals. You're gonna do that in track assistant and then press listen to vocal. You're gonna play the vocal. It's gonna listen to the problem areas and it's gonna manually dial the settings in for your compressor, equalizer, and then this little secret right here, which is like, I don't know, 30% of your vocal chain, the exciter. The exciter is going to take your controlled vocal sound and it's gonna make it sound quite natural again and make it sound more wet and just saturated in general. Then I have some extra sauce, some signature sound. So you don't need to do this, but I do it since it makes my vocal sound a lot better. So I have this vocal depth plugin, which is a incorporation into Ableton. So use your own sauce of your own DAW. DAWs often have plugins inside of their DAW, if that makes sense. It contains like all kinds of delays, which make the which make the vocal sound a lot more full, rich, and just better in general. So these are my vocals without the vocal chain. Like my knees, I'm in the lab. Like my uncle, I was born. Um, and this is with the vocal chain. Cooking up like my knees, I'm in the lab. Like my uncle, I was born a musician. I'm a man with a mission. So very clean vocals. Now we're gonna go over to the more artistic part of it, which is the ad libs. So I've recorded some ad libs right here. By the way. Way. I wanted to show you guys my recording process but the first time I recorded this song while recording the video my video got messed up so I would have loved to show you guys the process but I just can't shout out to Apple for making that happen and then this is the mastering adlib chain this is where the actual magic happens for the adlibs I have a phaser at a pretty low dry wet I have a chorus I have this vocal doubler which is like kind of all those two previous plugins in one instance i have a delay and i have this manipulator which i was talking about this is the yeet adlib sauce so i've actually never seen anyone talk about it i'm not even capping that's no clickbait no nothing so what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to get this manipulator plugin which is great raise the vocals by an octave raise the formant shift by an octave and then dial the dry wet to about 50 percent of your vocal this is the type of adlibs he used on this song this song this song it's pretty much the new adlib sound of ye and this is what it sounds like like i said when you put it out of the chain it's gonna you can do this however, you don't need the manipulator plugin, you see the formula, these are universal audio effects. So you can really do it with whatever tools that you have. So that was the adlib mastering chain, now we're gonna go over to the vocal mastering mastering chain. This chain is actually just slapped at the back of all the vocal chains we had previously. I just have a quite subtle saturator on it, like I had it about 50 dry wet, which I don't normally do, that's quite high. I have a master EQ cutting out some more low end because all these effects will add additional low ends to your chain. Also a big, big secret, I don't see anyone talk about EQs at the end of the vocal chain. I have a catch peaks compressor. This compressor doesn't do much, but when your chorus is a little bit louder than your verses, it will dug the chorus down by 2 dB so that it matches your verse up more. Again, I cannot stress this enough. I have certain effects multiple times in my chain, but they are always with different settings. This is how I basically sculpture my sound out very slightly VST per VST. I don't do it harsh. When you do it harsh, you're gonna lose out on certain characteristics of your vocals. When you do it more subtle and in multiple stages, you will get a more refined professional sound. So I have this AI do this thing again, and then I just dial the mix down like I did in the previous AI plugin you have to still correct the AI because the AI doesn't know what you want to sound like. Then I have a split channel. On the one I have just a stock Ableton reverb and on the other one I have this third party reverb from Native Instruments, ROM reverb. This is like the third secret I'm dropping, but you need to stereoize your vocals. This is what's gonna make your vocals stand out and sound more rich than the competition. So like I said, do it subtle, just a subtle stereoizing and a subtle width change to it. This makes your vocals sound more wide. Uh, reverb will widen up your sound too. So if you're not using reverb, you'll probably need to use a lot more of this to widen up your vocals. These are my vocals before that chain. These I'm in the lab like my uncle. I was born a musician. These I'm in the lab like my uncle. I was born a musician. I'm a man with a mission. When you do all those things, you will get this result. Hey, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Cooking up like my knees, I'm in the lab like my uncle. I was born a musician, I'm a man with a mission. Yeah, I'm married to the music, I got that and gotta use it. I've been working out, making music, you've been hanging out, you a monkey. I've been a regular guy, I took a different route, choosing a different path, that's what make me proud. So I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. I have a lot of freebies in my description. Make sure to go check those out and I'll catch you in the next one.